Hi there. Dan, Dan's Custom Hot Rods, Wichita, Kansas. Back with a interesting short video. We are, well, getting darn close to being welding a frame. The rear chassis on this Monza wagon wasn't exactly what I anticipated. Usually, something like this, well, doesn't require different uh, frame rails than what I ended up with but had to make a fuel cell mount and we incorporated the square thing you see here we incorporated the fuel cell mount into the bottom of the frame because there was nowhere else to put the damn thing uh, that's just the way it is sometimes it doesn't work like you want it to. Now, the frame is, as you can see, I got a wheel tub kind of cut down and nice, even. I've made it about three, four inches bigger than it normally would be because I intend to buy bigger tires than when we got here uh we're needing a 15 12 wheel and a 16 inch wide what will end up being an sr radial i've used them before and that's going to fill up this outside of this wheel well can't change the gap right there do you see it's an inch and a half you've got to have an inch and a half no matter what. Uh, same thing goes over here. The inch and a half is on the inside of that wheel tub. Wheel tubs are always welded flat, flush to the frame right there. So that's why that's straight up against the frame. The shock mount down there, upper shock mount up top, which also doubles as a cross member for the back frame. We'll put an X right about there in the middle of the frame. Big two by two X in the middle of that frame, obviously for strength. I hope you all understand. So that these frame rails don't go wiggly wobbly. So it's kind of where we're at. Uh, we have been, well, I've been working all weekend, pretty hard. I've got a bunch of shock mounts here that took a plasma cutter and made, and they fit that upper cross member nicely. So, um, as you can see, let me walk around. I have ladder bars all measured out. All nice and pretty even. There's a look from the front. There's that inch and a half that you need. Because when you inflate those tires, you're going to lose about half of that. So you'll end up being, a well, a little over a finger width to that frame. Now I use... A pan hard bar on the top of that. Um, I like the pan hard bars because they go sideways. They get welded from the rear end to the frame rail so that that thing can't move sideways on you. Frame rails, ladder bars, don't have the coils in yet. As you can see, have some kind of partial floor in <clears throat> and so we're, we're kind of getting there and I figured I'd shoot a video real quick before I go inside oh it's 36 out here it's freezing yeah see my breath oh nice out here <laughs> floorboard that one's tacked in uh, my wife is real short 
five foot, five foot two, something like that. Um, so we put the seat in today, tacked the floor in. It's nice and flat now so that we can mount a seat in. We're going to put two inch risers. Actually, it's two and three. So that this pushes the seat up where it's supposed to go. So as you can see, we have partial pieces here and there. I haven't got the brackets for the front of the ladder bars just yet. Of course, they're always stuck somewhere in another state. <clears throat> but that's okay. We're getting there. We'll eventually enclose most of this. Well, all of it actually, in possibly 16 gauge material. Haven't figured that out yet. Usually I use 16, 18 gauge. Uh, that's just a little bit for strength, a little bit for safety, because this 24 gauge that these wheel tubs are made out of, ha, huh, stuff wrinkles like crazy. Uh-uh, we don't do that. At least I don't. I'm not going to use this sheet metal to be strengthening a floor. Not smart. I don't care if you put these dimples in it all over the place. Anything under 18 gauge is, well, not in my book. I'd rather have a little bit extra weight um, than 10 what amount? I know a lot of guys who use lightweight aluminum, 062, stuff like that. Um, <coughs> Streetcar? I, I don't do that. I don't like it. It's too light. It's too tinny. And streetcar, you're going to hear this a mile away. It's going to just... <coughs> you want to wear earplugs while driving these things. No. I'd rather use a little bit of 16, 18 gauge so that we can drive it. You don't hear the rattles. You can cover this with anti-foam, uh, anti-deadening. You can cover it with whatever you want. I promise you, I've ridden in a lot of these cars for 40 years. You use 16 gauge, it's a lot thicker. It lasts a lot longer. This is all about longevity, not quarter mile. We're not racing this particular car. Absolutely not. This is grandma's toy, wagon, streetable, get around car. Just just a cruiser. That's all it is. Not even going to incorporate NHRA safety stuff for track. Now, that's not to say that I'm not putting gussets in and stuff like that. Of course, yeah. You always put gussets in and stuff like that, but we're not required to put in uh, NHRA battery shutoffs. Um, we're probably going to mount the battery right here behind the driver's side or passenger side seat. But beyond that, uh, I don't need to go all the way back by the fuel cell to mount the battery. I have enough room right here to mount a battery and be safe with it. Run the cables forward doesn't matter either side doesn't matter um i may have one run it on the passenger side over there just because the positive cable goes straight to the battery yeah hey a little bit of forethought kind of like these wheel wells just make them a little bit bigger so you can put a bigger tire in because those aren't standing those are just mock-up uh, so anyways we have a floor, so we can put some seats in. We have chassis that will probably weld up in the next two to three days. Weld up completely uh, and get some brackets made for these ladder bars right here. So uh, that's the nice part of, ah, uh, got to stand up, old man hurts. It's a nice part of having a plasma cutter. And let me tell you, if you don't have one of these babies, man, you are missing out 
They are nice. I would <laughs> love Eastwood. Love Eastwood. I've had this plasma cutter for three or four years. I uh, can't live without it. So anyways, there is frame, full chassis in the back. As I said in one of my other videos a couple weeks ago, why in the hell does something like this have to cost $15,000? Um, I've got 200 no, 108 about, about $200 in steel. Okay, sure. My time in basically building this thing from scratch, sure. If I'm getting paid $500 an hour, I could charge somebody $15,000. Uh, I don't have any overhead. My bills are paid. Um, thank you. <laughs> so when you all say that you're getting soaked by people charging 20 grand for something like this, right here, come and see me. Dan's Custom Hot Rod, Wichita, Kansas. 316 area code, right here in the middle of I-35. Um, come and see me, and I'll take care of you, because this can't cost. A full chassis underneath this thing? No, I'm not done. I have not gone underneath the floorboards up front. So, we're getting there. Gotta go to the steel place tomorrow, pick up some more that go forward, and get underneath there and weld it. So anyways, this is the big back half. This is the back end of this thing. Um, like I said again, if this is a full chassis car. I would charge somebody somewhere between three and five thousand dollars. Don't quote me on that because it won't work. But three five thousand, I don't know why not. Um, this is involved. I was up for 10 hours one night, started about 4 o'clock in the afternoon and ended up, I guess it was 12 because I ended up getting out of here about 5 a.m. I don't remember what it was the other morning. Look at my other video. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there it is. No, I'm going to take that wheel tub out. It's just sitting there uh, and weld this whole thing up. So stay tuned. Uh, the reason why I didn't film this one being pieced together is because I made a lot of mistakes and it took me a whole night to re redo that right there. I didn't realize that, well, I had a fuel cell, but I was putting it in wrong. So I had to rebuild the whole thing and fit a fuel cell down in here. It wasn't funny. It wasn't easy. But that's why. So that's why I didn't film me putting this thing together because, <laughs> no, it was ugly. And sometimes it's just not, I was working too hard, sorry. But there it is. Have some fun. Um, we've been having fun all week, all weekend. So, um there it is, and there she be. So, hope you enjoyed these videos. Uh, eventually, we're gonna get on the uh, back on the Corvette. Got some more parts in, so we can do some things, and we're gonna have a little bit of fun with the Corvette. We're not tubbing the Corvette this year. Uh, <laughs> here we go again. Lack of money, honey. So, um, the next time you decide you want something built, Pro Street, tubbed out, truck, car, doesn't matter. Come and see me. Dance Custom Hot Rods, Wichita, Kansas. Thank you. Appreciate it.